Howdy there once again YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo and I am a beginner amateur seismologist who hopes to make a career out of monitoring volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. Please like, share, subscribe, and visit my website https colon slash slash monitorsize.weewee.com for information on how to download seismic data, analyze it in top-notch software, a seismic image archive for select United States volcanoes, and much much more. I even posted a few new blog posts yesterday in my Seismo blog, so go check that out if you wish. My website link is below in the description box right under my email address. Well guys, we have something very interesting occurring. So, for those of you who have stuck by me and this channel for pretty much ever since I started, do you remember how at the beginning of this year, 2018, and the end of last year, 2017, I discovered a very strange nationwide vibration? You remember how it showed on virtually every seismic station within the United States? Well, folks, it is happening once again. I have not seen this occur this strong since last winter, almost a full year ago. It is very odd because it seems like it mainly happens in the winter. But what would that have to do with anything? Why would the winter season be more inclined to see this vibration than any other season? Who knows, and I probably will never have an answer to that. Now, you guys probably know I don't like using the online seismic web recorders too much because I usually generate my own. However, with this specific event, it seems the online web recorders generated especially by the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology are the best to use if you wish to visualize this low-level vibration. After showing most of the helicorders for the country, I will then try to analyze this vibration which I dubbed Long Distance Long Duration Tremor last year, and I'll use the program Swarm. I have already discovered that this is not an electronic or waveform scaling issue. There really has been a large increase in background microseisms, particularly between 0.1 and the 0.3 Hz frequency range. Microseisms are minute vibrations caused by many different things, but typically are always small and carry an extremely low frequency, so they usually never get in the way of anything. But whatever this is, it is showing up mainly across the entire North American continent. I'm having trouble finding this vibration in Europe, in Africa, so it's mainly occurring in like Canada, Alaska, the United States, possibly even the northern sections of Mexico. So really just the North American continent, which to me is very peculiar. This vibration is very emergent as well, meaning that it builds over a specific period of time. Now what could this be? Well, I do not have an answer yet, but I hope one of you out there has a good one. I have many different theories, so please comment below to let me know what you think this could be. So, let's first start with the seismic helicorders for Montana. So, as you can see here, this is the LPZ, Long Period Vertical, chart for MSOUS, which is for Missoula, Montana, which is just north of Yellowstone, maybe 100 miles or so, I'm guessing. The long period charts show this the best. Okay, but notice how the size increases throughout the day. Notice that? It does seem the first generated line of this chart, and this line is called the seismogram, was much smaller than the rest of the day. And you can tell, again, it does build and build and build. And again, this is from the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology, the LPZ chart for MSO. Now, let's go back and go to the 26th, which is one day prior. At the beginning of this chart, you can see the remainder of the effects from the 6.8 Greece earthquake. You can see some type of vibration died down right after it. Notice that? And then it was pretty calm right here. You know, there's another teleseism right here. Go down to the end of the day. Doesn't seem like anything's happening. Doesn't look like there's much of an increase in activity. But now going back to the most recent chart for 1027, you can tell that it increased right around 2 o'clock UTC to 3 o'clock UTC. That's about the time it started to increase. Now it is hard to pick a definite beginning since this event is very emergent. But the time of the increase in energy is pretty much consistent with every other seismic station that picked this up in the whole country, as you will see in just a second. Now let's take a look at some more helicorders. Remember, please, that this vibration started around 2 or 3 UTC, and 2 UTC is marked right here. So that means this line would be 159 UTC. This area right here be 158, 157, 156, blah, 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 blah. You, you know what I'm trying to say. 
So keep that time period in mind. 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock UTC is when the vibration increased. So keep it in mind when I show you more helicorders so that you can compare it yourself as I walk through them. Now let me go back. Before I start, let's go to a random date. Let's just go to the 20th, why don't we? So here's what a somewhat normal day looks like for a long period station from MSO from Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology. Here's what a normal day looks like, guys. See, it looks normal. Now, let's real quick go to today. That's not normal. Do you notice the difference? Do you notice it? See? Big difference, guys. Big difference. Here's the 20th. Here's today. 20th today. 20th today. Yeah, there's a big difference, guys. Big, 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 big difference. Now, here is the short period vertical chart for the same station, Missoula, Montana. You can see the same increase in energy. Notice it takes up almost, almost the whole day, and the waveforms themselves resemble harmonic tremor. It's not harmonic tremor. The frequency's off, the waveforms are off, but it does appear on these graphs that it looks like harmonic tremor, but it's not. But whatever it is, it is very weird. And if you want to go back, let's go back to another normal day. Let's go to the 20th. And here's a normal day. Notice that you do not see the jagged up and down movements that you see back here. Notice that? Forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right, so you see that. Now let's real quick go to broadband vertical. Wow, yeah, broadband is picking it up very strong. Look at that. Woo-wee. Okay, so you want to see a normal day on here? Now let's go to the 20th. There we go. Let's zoom in. Oh, it seems like it was showing a little bit of something here on the 20th. But as, as we saw on the other two stations, it really wasn't showing much at all. I mean, the other two channels. But look. Look at the drastic difference. You see that? Here's today. Here's the 20th. Here's today. Here's the 20th. See, these are mainly normal background micro -seisms. This is not, guys. This is very strong to just be a micro -seism. Very strong. So... Yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on, but this is the same exact thing that I saw last year. So you could clearly see an obvious difference in the nor in the somewhat normal day compared to today, right? It almost seems like the normal micro took a shot of steroids or something. Again, the dominant frequency range for this vibration is around 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 hertz or so. That is extremely low for how powerful these signals are. So as I go through the following hilly quarters, keep in mind that this tremor is highly likely not to be felt. Though it seems strong and contains a very strong power, it still is far too weak and carries far too low of a frequency to be felt or heard. Unless you know you're really sensitive to vibrations, you never know. But what the hell could this be, guys? And how come this vibration rarely shows in the summer? Isn't that weird? Usually it only occurs after October and before March. And this event is being picked up by seismic stations at Yellowstone 2. You will see better when I go through them on the program Swarm. But here, look, see, this is the beginning of the day. Just look very closely at the lines and see if you can see any jagged lines like this right here. Now, as I go through the day, watch, just watch, guys. See, it starts getting stronger and stronger. You start to see more spikes popping up out of the normal background micro -seism. See that? And it slowly increases. Let me zoom out just a little bit. It's, you can see it a little bit better as I zoom out. You notice that? So it is showing up on here too. And here's the helicorder for MCID for the same time period. Again, you can clearly see the increase in background activity throughout the entire day, increasing as the time goes on. You notice that? Let me zoom out again a little bit. You can see it was a little bit calmer up here. Down here, it's off the charts. So let's go take a look at the remainder of the seismograms for Montana. So let's go back real quick. All right, so let's go through some of them, shall we? Let's start with Six Mile Mountain and just confirm if these are seeing it as well. Yes, notice the Jagged Peaks. It is seeing it as well. Let's go back. Let's go to McKenzie Canyon. This is McKenzie Canyon. Yes, it is seeing it as well with an increase around 2 to 3 UTC. Let's go back. Let's go to Monada, Montana. Not really showing it as well. That could be because this station could possibly record higher frequencies than lower frequencies. Because there are some seismic stations that record below 1 hertz as well. But also there are some seismic stations out there also that record only 1 hertz and above. Now, 
since this is carrying such a low frequency, there is some higher, uh, higher powers around 1 hertz, but mainly the main power of this vibration is between 0 0.1 hertz and 0 0.3 hertz. So let's go back real quick. Let's go to Helena Valley. You can see it is showing it on Helena Valley. Always compare with surrounding stations. Mount Humbug sees an increase around the same exact time. Two. Okay, not a coincidence. Let's go to Barton Gulch. Barton Gulch saw an increase around the same time as well, and it's still increasing. Okay, okay. Earthquake Lake. I don't know if it shows well on here. It does. Usually it doesn't show well on here, but it does today. My goodness. Okay, let's go to TP Creek. TP Creek's not showing it very much at all. But most other stations are. Here's Elliston. Yep, it's showing it here as well. Very weird background tremor with a very low frequency. Now let's go to Sealy Lake, Montana. It is feeling it here as well. Increase around 2 to 3 UTC. Notice how it is very emergent and takes a while to build, and it's still building. So Bozeman Pass, BZMT is barely showing it at all. Let's go down. Let's go down. Let's see Boulder Array, Wyoming. Eh, barely. Just barely, but you can see an increase. Yep, around 2 to 3 UTC. It increased, and you can see it's stronger right down here, which is how it is right now. Let's go to Blue Mountains Array, Oregon. Oregon is feeling this as well. Oregon, guys. Oregon. That is way far away from Montana. Just letting you know. Haley, Idaho is kind of feeling it as well. Let's go to Newport, Washington. Now remember, these are not normal background micro guys. I want to show you again. Newport, Washington. Notice how it says Newport, Washington. That is in Washington State. In Eastern Washington, I'm pretty sure. Now let's go to the 20th. Notice the difference. Please notice the difference. This is not normal wind or background micro -seisms. This is some type of background vibration. I don't know what it is or what it's being caused by, but it has a main power. The main power of this vibration is around 0.1 hertz to 0.3 hertz. And it's showing up to about 1 hertz or so, but the main power of the event is around 0.1 to 0.3 hertz. So it is definitely a very peculiar event. Look, look at this. Rapid City, South Dakota is showing it too. Do you not see that? Do you not see that? What the hell? Really though? Really? Okay, let's go to the 20th, don't believe me? Here is a normal day where there is no background vibration. Now here is the day today. There is no vibration, vibration. No vibration, vibration. No vibration, vib... Vibration! Okay, so what in the living hell could this be, guys? What the hell could this be? Wow, guys, so it literally shows on virtually every single seismic station provided on this web, web page, except a few select ones. But let's not just stop right there. Let's go to the east coast of America and pick a seismic station from Virginia. Now remember, most of the links you see me use will be in the description box below. Again, if any link is ever left out, please let me know immediately. Now before I start, this is where the seismic stations I was just showing resides. Now here's Montana, the MB network for the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology is in this area right here. All their stations, uh, most of the stations I just showed are in this area right here. Here's the station of MSO, the first station that I showed in this video. Here's Norris Geyser Basin at Yellowstone. Here is NLWA, which is in the US network, which I'll show in just a bit. That's on the west coast and all the way over here is Blacksburg, Virginia, which is where seismic station BLA resides, which I'm gonna show you right now. Look at how far away that is, guys. So we got the West Coast. We got pretty much in the middle of the country. And then we got the East Coast. Keep in mind these locations. Blackbirds, Virginia is on the East Coast. Again, Yellowstone is pretty much in the middle with Montana. And NLWA is on the West Coast. So we have the whole country covered right here. The whole country covered. Here we are at the Virginia Tech Helicopter website. We are going to use Seismic Station BLA, right? Well, let's select the most recent helicopter for the short period vertical channel, excuse me, right here. Let's click on it. As you can see, 
the background vibration does show on this station as well. Keep in mind that this station is over 1,500 miles away from station MSO in Montana, guys. Now, a normal day, let's go back, looks like this. You see that? Now, let's real quick type in 7 up there to go to today. Let's go back and forth, guys. Back and forth. There's the 20th. Here's today. There's the 20th. Here's today. There's the 20th. Here's today. Just like the other seismic station I just showed in Montana, right? Oh, my goodness. It's the same exact thing. But how can it show 1,500 miles away from Virginia to Montana? Guys, this is showing on multiple surrounding stations. Oh, I'm going to say probably 95% of the seismic stations in the United States is feeling this right now. But it's very low level, guys. This isn't something that you're going to feel with your feet. The frequency is between the, the main frequencies is around 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 hertz, which is very, very low. To me, this does not seem like anything volcanic, really, or really anything tectonic either. It, to me, it almost seems like, like gravity waves or something. I don't know. I don't know. It is very, very weird, but it is occurring once again, and you can see it right here, plain as day. Now, this is, there's no way this could be a glitch, especially when so many stations are feeling it. So here we are at the heliplots. Let's see if we can do the ANSS stations instead of all of them. ANSS heliplots, there we go. Okay, this is mainly for the United States. Now, real quick, these are not like the traditional seismic web recorders that you were used to. These heliplots are much different. Number one, they only show UTC. UTC, that's it. Number two, they show an hour per line per seismogram instead of half an hour like we're used to, used to seeing. And third, notice how it says band pass 0 0.004 to 0 0.05 hertz. Remember, HZ, whenever you see HZ, even on the UNAVCO spectrograms, that means frequency. HZ is frequency. There's nothing else in the whole world that is HZ, but frequency has to do, once again, with frequency. <laughs> so this means this entire heliplot and any other heliplot that says this will only, only show activity between 0.004 and 0.05 hertz, which right now to me that is okay, because that is kind of within the range of what we will see with this tremor. But that's why it doesn't show as strong on these because it's occurring more around 0.1 hertz, but it is still occurring below 0.1 hertz as well. Now, I want to show you this. Remember, around 2 or 3 UTC is when the vibrations increased. Here we are in Missouri. This is Missouri. Do you see around 2 or 3 UTC, the lines get, quote, unquote, more bold? Do you see that right here? And it seems like it is just finally starting to calm just a little bit. But you can see an obvious increase in energy uh, at the same exact time as this, and the same exact time as this, and pretty much every other station that showed it. So that means it's obviously happening. Obviously. Let's go down to Corvallis, Oregon, real quick. You can see around 2 to 3 UTC, there was an increase in background energy a little bit. Let's go down. Let's try to find the strongest one. Let's see. Hawaii. Black. Hey, RSSD. Look at that. RSSD. Black Hill, South Dakota. RSSD is this station as well. This is the same station, guys. Same exact station. Let's go back. You can see it showed it around 2 to 3 UTC as well, just like it shows on the same station here. RSSD. RSSD. Except this is LHZ, not SPZ. So what is going on, guys? Let's go down. Let's look at Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, around 2 to 3 UTC, is showing background vibrations as well. An increase at the same time as we have seen on every other seismic station. Let's go down. So the timings match on multiple, multiple seismic stations throughout the country. How could that still be surface noise? It can't. That's impossible. Surface noise can't travel across the whole damn country at the same times. 2 to 3 UTC in 
Minnesota this time. You can see it increase here as well, and it does look like it is decreasing now, thank God. But do you not see that? My goodness, guys, this is pretty crazy. I was pretty stoked to see this. Yes, I just used the word stoked. <laughs> because I haven't seen this since last year. And again, around 2 to 3 UTC, you see an increase in background energy. The lines get quote-unquote bold. Notice that? Binghamton, New York. This is New York all the way on the East Coast, guys. So we were just on the East Coast right there. Let's go to the middle of the country, Bozeman, Montana. Again, 2 to 3 UTC. You can see an increase in energy as well. Let's go back. Let's go all the way down. So we just showed the East Coast. We just showed the middle of the country. Now let's show the West Coast real quick. Do, 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 do. Nielsen Lookout. Here's NLWA. Remember in Google Earth, NLWA is right there. Here's MSO and BOZ would be right about down here. And then BLA is right here. So that's across the whole country, guys. The whole country once again. And you can see a Nielton lookout around 2 to 3 UTC. There was an increase in background vibrations as well. Again, for another station, guys. Another station. Now, I'm going to go here real quick. I'm going to show you some of the images that I saved for some random heliplots. Here is for Newport, Washington, I believe. Can I zoom in? Nope. The detail is pretty crappy if I zoom in. All right, whatever. So look at that, guys. Look at that. Few select seismic stations from around the world. Now remember, this only shows frequencies between 0 0.004 hertz and 0 0.05 hertz. So very, 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 very low frequencies. That's why these are mainly used to look at global teleseisms, global distant large earthquakes. Because they usually, let's say an earthquake occurs on the opposite side of the world. If you have a seismic station on the other side of the world, usually the frequencies will be far lower than like one hertz you know you know what i'm saying but look at that look at that guys look at that hold on ignore the blue graphs look at that again that's the same thing same time guys that's the same exact time frame so what the hell is going on really really what and it's showing on pretty much every seismic station every single one and I said almost every single one. There are, of course, a few select ones that aren't showing anything. And I don't know what the heck is going on here. <laughs> I don't know, guys. But really, though, what is going on? Does anybody know what's going on? Because it's just weird. It's just very, 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 very weird. So wasn't that interesting? Yet another source of data points to a very long duration, long distance vibration that, in all truthfulness, is extremely peculiar and enigmatic. Usually when these vibrations occur, the tilt meters at Yellowstone provided by UNAVCO show increased ground motion. We will see what it shows tomorrow. And I will provide the findings on my blog post, on my website, to update this video. So if any of you want to see it, please go bookmark my site now and check back every now and then. The link is below in the description box underneath my email address. If it does show up on the tilt meters, then we have yet another data source proving the presence of this event. Now, real quick, let us go to the program swarm. Here we are in the seismic program swarm. Now, do you remember the three locations of these seismic stations? Do you remember? Okay, let me show you just one more time. NLWA is on the west coast near the Olympic Mountains. MCID is right on the southern tip of Yellowstone Caldera, right where the mouse is, right there. So it's almost in the center of the country, pretty much. BLA is in Blacksburg, Virginia, which is on the east coast. So the whole country, guys, the whole country. Let's go to BLA. Actually, first, let's start with MCID first. And again, you can see I have three stations listed. BLA in Virginia, MCID at Yellowstone, NLWA in Washington. As I just said, let's start with MCID. Hopefully, it'll work. The program just froze, so I had to quit out of it and restart it again. Okay, let's spread this out just a little bit. Let's do that, and let's do that. Okay, so starting off, just real quick. Look up here on the helicopter. Do you notice, just look closely at the lines. Before I look and analyze them, look closely at the lines, how they increase in energy all the way down here. Let's go down here. See this increase right here. This is what I'm talking about. Now, let's take a closer look at it. Very interesting. 
very low frequency. Remember I said around 0.1 hertz it was occurring? So here's what I'm talking about. This back, quote-unquote background tremor right here. Let's take a look at its frequencies real quick. This is what I mainly want to look at is the spectral plot. Usually I look at other things, but right now I want to look at the spectral plot. Do you see how it's between 0.1 hertz and 0.2 hertz? 0.3 hertz would be right about here. So it is about between 0.1 and 0.3 hertz. Notice the power drastically changes from up here. Actually, let's go all the way back just real quick. Let's go to a random location right here. About 40,000 power. It's not looking too bad. And then let's go and keep going and keep going. You can see it is about 0.2 hertz right there. And then as it increases, it gets stronger, going up to almost 1.4 E5, which is very strong. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how it moves. Here, let me go forward just a little bit. And this is the most recent, somewhat the most recent. Very strong. Look, 1.4 E5 again. That's very strong for 0.2 hertz. Very low frequency, but the power is pretty crazy, guys. That's pretty interesting. Let me zoom out just a little bit to show you. Okay, notice the waveforms here. Notice they don't look here. Let me go back just a little bit. And then look at that. And then look down here. All right, you see the difference? Look at that. Now look at that. These look more spread out, don't they? One more time. Let's look at this. Oh, whoops, I screwed that up. Let's look at this. And then let's look at this. You notice how they're a little more spread out? And again, let's go to the spectral plot. Again, around 0 0.1, 0 0.2 hertz with very high power, guys. The power is in insane. I mean, I, I'm very surprised how strong this vibration is for how low the frequency is. And again, you can obviously see it increase. But, you know, there's many other data sources that can prove to you that this is occurring. I mean, we just showed it's occurring on, what, like every single seismic station, pretty much? Let's real quick go to NLWA BHZ, which is broadband vertical. You can see, wowza, it did increase here as well. Man, okay, that's interesting. So, let's look at the spectral plot once again. And let's zoom out just a little bit. Look at that, guys, around 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 hertz again. 8E5. Look at the power. Look at the power. 1.2E6. Do you not see the power? Look at that. And, it, of course, the power goes up and down, up and down. It dodges back and forth, but it is remaining around 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 hertz. But the power of this vibration is very strong at some points. So does anybody know what the hell? Whoa, whoops. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let me fix that. There we go. Does anybody know what the hell it's go what's going on? Because whatever this is, it's very odd. Look at those strange lines. You see that? Look at this right here. That's extra strong. Yeah, wow. So, does anybody know what is going on? Because this vibration, again, is very low frequency. Very, 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 very very low frequency my goodness now let's go to the most recent let's do the spectral plot once again which is the main thing i want to focus on just to see the power of the frequencies all right 6e5 around 0 0.2 hertz 0 0.2 hertz it went up a little bit there let's go a little bit farther back let's see 0 0.2 hertz again 0 0.2 0 0.110 e5 that is pretty strong guys pretty strong Okay. Almost looks like it's dancing back and forth. So it is remaining between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 hertz, going up to about 10 E5. Oh, 1, 2 E6 right there. 1, 2 E6, that is very strong, guys. So does anybody have an explanation as to what the hell is going on? Because this is not normal, guys. This is not normal. I just, I don't understand. I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. So... Maybe this is normal. Maybe this is just a seasonal thing. I don't know. I, I'm really stumped because this is the main thing. that One of the main things, actually, that got me interested in seismology is what the hell this could be. I mean, the vi it's literally a vibration showing up on hundreds, hundreds of seismic stations, guys. I could show way more than this, but it'd be like a, it'd be like a five-hour long video. So if you guys want any additional data, 
just keep an eye out for my blog. I'm going to put a new blog post out soon with the tilt data from UNAVCO to show that this really was a vibration of some sort. Um, and I'll, that'll probably be tomorrow night or so. But, okay, if anybody wants any data or anybody wants to talk about this, please email me because I want to start talking to people about this and start understanding what this could be because it freaks me out, guys. It's weird. It really is weird and enigmatic, and it's a big puzzle. And, you, you know, if you know me, I love puzzles, guys. I love puzzles because they're puzzling. <laughs> Ooh, looks like it, there's a little bit of snow coming down at Yellowstone. Oh, man, I wish it would snow here in Seattle. So, guys, wasn't that interesting? So, there does seem to be a nationwide vibration that contains frequencies around 0.1 to 0.3 hertz, which is extremely low for the amount of power that this vibration contains. Hi. Say hi. Hi. Say, I love Daddy. I have Daddy. Yay. To me, it almost looks like a type of gravity vibration caused by tidal forces, but who knows? It could be anything. That is just one of my many different theories I have for this strange vibration. One thing we know for sure is this vibration is extremely enigmatic, and we may ne never truly understand it. I will upload the tilt data again from Yellowstone to my blog tomorrow to see if we do have another data source to confirm this. The more data sources you use, the easier you can prove something. So if you want to keep an eye out for that coming article, and also read my recent blog post that I uploaded last night, then please come visit my website here and my Seisma blog. I try to put out a blog post every one to three days or so. There are even many other aspects of my website that contain a lot of information, so please bookmark this and check back every now and then for new content. The link to this website is in the description box below right under my email address. I even have a seismic image archive, guys, for Lassen Peak Volcano, Long Valley Caldera Super Volcano, Newberry Caldera, Mount Hood, and Mount Rainier. Nobody else keeps a seismic image archive for these volcanoes, at least from what I have found. So if you guys want to see the seismic image archive, and I have been keeping the archive since early September, I believe since September 1st, I believe, and I'm going to be doing it every single day. So it's going to be pretty much forever. It's going to keep being added onto and updated with new images daily. So what do you guys think this vibration could mean? Is it related to the increased movement of molten material within our outer core? Is it tidal forces from a distant planetary body? Is it possibly the tectonic plates moving at a faster and more uniform pace than what we would expect to see? I have absolutely no idea. But those are only three of my theories about this event. I have many more. I thank you all for watching, and remember all of this can be done by yourself in the comfort of your own home. All you have to do is go to my website, and also go to the many links that are in the description box below. I also do keep a links page on my website, which has all the resources that I use every single day. If I forgot one, let me know and I'll add it. Keep your eyes out for new large earthquakes approaching. I thank you for your time and God bless. Remember, God does not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. The truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. And that is the truth. <laughs> ben Ferriolo signing off. Have a great night, guys.